Now, as I said this morning, I made a mistake on the second reading. As you can see, it says epistle reading. And then it says Luke, and Luke is a gospel, not an epistle, but it's the wrong one anyway, because that's the reading from last week, Luke. The reading to correct reading is in Matthew, but we'll go to Isaiah first, page 639, because that's right. <laughs> page 639 in your pew Bibles, you will find Isaiah chapter 26. We will be reading the first nine verses. Say amen when you have it. Any the old lords? Oh, good. Okay. Let's read. On that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. He sets up victory like walls and bulwarks. Open the gates so that the righteous nation that keeps faith may enter in. Those of steadfast mind you keep in peace. In peace because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord God you have an everlasting rock. For he has brought low the inhabitants of the height, the lofty city he lays low. He lays it low to the ground, casts it to the dust. The foot tramples it, the feet of the poor, the steps of the needy. The way of the righteous is level. O oh, just one, you make smooth the path of the righteous. In the path of your judgments, O oh Lord, we wait for you. Your name and your renown are the soul's desire. My soul yearns for you in the night. My spirit within me earnestly seeks you. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. Amen. Now, our gospel reading is on page 895. It's Matthew 16, verses 13 through 20. Page 895. Matthew 16, verses 13 to 20. Say amen when you have it. I hope that's only one amen. I guess we've got a few old lords. There we go. And beginning at verse 13. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. So the first thing I want to say is, you remember last week um, when I was preaching about Daniel and the lion's den, and I said God kept him from being a Frisky's buffet? And then I said, but I didn't know what flavor he would be. Well, afterwards, Glenn approached me and told me he knew what flavor Daniel would be. Filet of soul. That's awesome. I wish, I, I wish he had told me that before I preached, because I definitely would have used that. Love it. Love it. Now, you know why we have so much fun in our men's group, because we all have such great sense of humor, don't we? You don't have to agree, ladies. It's okay. We, 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 we amuse ourselves. That's all that matters. So who remembers adjusting the vertical hold control on your television set? Ding, 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 right? If the vertical hold was off, the image would jump, flicker, and roll, driving everybody crazy, right? Then we would smack the side of the set and we would move the aluminum foil covered rabbit ears, right? That's it. Hold it. Hold it. Yeah. Yeah. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Just like that. Also, we could watch whatever program we wanted. It's time for my show. Does this ring any bells? Anybody relate to this? It's a, it's a, I found that it's a generational thing because I asked somebody younger about the vertical hold and it's like, I never heard of that. What is that? I was like, yeah, well. You missed out on a lot. What can I say? 
with your ultra HD TVs and all that, no LEDs. Yeah. Anyway, so sometimes we need to adjust the vertical hold. In our walk with God, the vertical hold can get out of whack. This is the hold that God has on us and us on him. The vertical hold also affects the horizontal hold. That's our relationship with everything and everyone around us. But to get a clear picture, we must first adjust the vertical hold. Does that make sense? For all of you who smack the TV sets, yep. Um, what do you want for your life? What are you really living for? If you could have the good life, what would it look like? If you were to say, if only I had blank, then my life would be blank. How would you fill in those blanks? Could it be that even though you are God's child, you still think of your life as belonging to you? When you think of your life this way, then ministry is about stepping out of your life, giving God a little bit of your time, energy, and money, and then stepping back into your life. In this way of thinking, ministry is something separate from your daily life. It tends to be structured and scheduled by leaders in your church, and you support it for a while with your own efforts. But behind this view of ministry is the thought that your life belongs to you. And you give moments of it to the Lord for his work. The view of ministry in the New Testament is radically different from our view. The Bible is quite clear in its call to us to understand that our lives no longer belong to us. We don't own our physicality. We don't own our emotionality. We don't own our spirituality. We don't own our mentality. We don't own our psychology. We don't own our worldview. We don't own our opinions. We don't own our communication abilities. We don't own our relationships. We don't own our gifts. We don't own our experiences. We don't even own our possessions because in the deepest sense of what ownership truly means, we just don't own it. We need to adjust the vertical hold. Paul gets at this when he says in 1 Corinthians 6, you are not your own, for you were bought with a price. You begin to get close to what God has designed your life to be as one of his children when you understand that nothing that makes up you and your life belongs to you. You and all that makes up you were bought with a price. So you are owned by the one who paid that price. And we know who paid the price for us, right? the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to adjust the vertical hold. But there is a second thing that the New Testament also makes very clear. It is that God has called all of his children not to be mere recipients of his kingdom work of grace, but to be instruments of that work as well. It's what I call the total involvement paradigm. I had to go to seminary to get that fancy word. Um, that is all God's people all the time. And we know what all means, right? Amen. Every one of God's children has been given a call to ministry. And everyone must think of themselves that way. We need to adjust the vertical hold. The scriptures do not teach a separation between life and ministry. Every dimension of your life is a ministry. Marriage is ministry. Friendship is ministry. Parenting is ministry. Being a neighbor is ministry. The workplace is a place of ministry. You have been called to represent a glorious Savior who has graced you with everything you need to live with a ministry mentality. We need to adjust the vertical hold. And how do we adjust the vertical hold? Well, that's a good question. If your TV set at home was acting up, what would you do? You'd look at the instruction manual or maybe the troubleshooting guide to see what could be done. Or you would call someone who could help you interpret the manuals and guides, right? Lauren absolutely hates reading manuals. Literally, she will not open a manual. So it falls to me. Hey, here, read this. This says to me, just read the manual. Just tell me all the time. 
So when we need to adjust the vertical hold with God, we turn to the manual and troubleshooting guide, God's word. Let's have a look, shall we? I know you're all excited. I can see it. Okay. Our reading from this morning, the one that I want to really point out here is Colossians 3, 1 to 4. And I want to read it in the message version because it, it sounds different and it focuses on different things. So if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Pursue the things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle along, eyes to the ground, absorbed with the things that are right in front of you. Look up and be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from his perspective. Your old life is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though it's invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. When Christ, your real life, remember, shows up again on this earth, you'll show up too, the real you, the glorious you. We need to adjust the vertical hold and give our attention to where it needs to be, up above with Christ, who is our life, the one who paid the price for us to be forgiven and redeemed. Amen? This morning we read from Isaiah, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are set on you, Lord, because they trust in you. You will keep them in perfect peace whose minds are set on you. So now those two words that we render in English as perfect peace is only one word in Hebrew. And it might be a word you've heard before. Anybody ever heard of shalom? That's what that word is in Hebrew. And shalom is defined as peace, safety, prosperity, well-being, intactness, wholeness, security, and contentment. That's shalom. That's perfect peace. Does perfect peace sound good to anybody this morning? Sure does to me. We need to adjust the vertical hold. We mentioned this scripture last week, Psalm 91, 14 and 15. Those who love me, I will deliver. I will protect those who know my name. When they call to me, I will answer them. I will be with them in trouble. I will rescue them and honor them. God will answer, rescue, and protect those who love him and know his name. Anybody know what God's name is? Go ahead. Tell me. Somebody. I am is one. What's the other one? Yeah, that's a name too. Yeah, but I'm just talking about the easy one, Jesus. You guys went too deep on me there. I like it, though. I like it. Jesus, the great I am. We need to adjust the vertical hold. In the book of Hebrews, in chapter 12, the first two verses read this way, again in the message version. Do you see what this means? All these pioneers who blaze the way, all these veterans cheering us on. It means we better get on with it. Strip down and start running and never quit. No extra spiritual fat, no parasitic sins. Keep your eyes on Jesus, who both began and finished this race we're in. Study how he did it, because he never lost sight of where he was headed. That exhilarating finish in and with God. He could put up with anything along the way, the cross, shame, whatever. And now he's there in the place of honor right alongside God. When you find yourselves flagging in your faith, go over that story again, item by item, that long litany of hostility he plowed through. That will shoot adrenaline into your souls. You see, we have to be like greyhounds in a dog race. Has anybody seen a dog race with greyhounds? They have this electric rabbit that runs on a rail and the dogs chase it. And that's how they get them to race because dogs are smarter than we are. They're not just going to run around like lunatics for no reason. So they chase this rabbit and they try to catch it. And whoever, whichever dog's the fastest wins the race, right? So you see, we're supposed to be like these greyhounds. We're supposed to be as focused as they are, but we're supposed to be focused on Jesus because Silly rabbits, tricks are for kids. We need to adjust the vertical hold. 
Blessed is the person, David told us in Psalm 1, blessed is the person who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. Now that is all horizontal hold stuff. Everything around us, the world and all its ungodliness, counsel of the wicked, way of sinners, seat of scoffers, the person is blessed that does not get down with all that. What do they do instead? Well, I'm glad you asked that because David had an answer. Their delight is in the word of the Lord, and on his word they meditate day and night. They are like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither, and all that they do, they prosper. Meditating on and studying God's word enables us to adjust the vertical hold, to make the picture clearer, to get a better view of what we're looking at. See the vivid colors of God's plan and experience true reality. Ultra HD. No, 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 not high definition. Holy discernment. That's the ultra HD we need. Amen? And you can't get that at Best Buy. And the Geek, the geek Squad cannot help you with this. Trust me. Okay, it just does not work. You'll just be disappointed. We need to adjust the vertical hold. Amen? Amen.